Hello guys, welcome you to the lecture on design of transmission system. Today we are going to see about flat belt and the design procedure for a flat belt. What is flat belt? A belt which is having rectangular cross section that is called flat belt. This flat belt drive is very simple in construction because there is pulley and belt. There is no need of any external groove making to accommodate the belt. Just pulley surface will be a circular one. This flat belt drive can be used for large center distance power transmission. Next, let us see the design procedure for flat belt drive. First, we have to find the pulley diameter. There is a ratio product of speed and diameter is proportional to the speed and diameter. Suppose you can see here the product of speed and diameter. Here D1 is the diameter of the driver pulley, D2 is the diameter of driven pulley, N1 speed of the driver, N2 is speed of the driven okay now the this product is proportional to the this product this one is we assume as a driver right driver product is equal to the driven value product how this formula is arrived without the slip the velocity is equal v1 is equal to v v2 right velocity 1 is equal to velocity 2 now velocity 1 is equal to pi d1 n1 divided by 60 equal d2 n2 divided by 60 right so remaining things will be cancelled so d1 n1 is equal to d proportional to the d2 n2 right so this is the formula derived now we can write in another terms speed ratio is equal to d1 divided by d2 suppose the thickness of the belt is given just you add this thickness with the diameter suppose two shafts located more distance apart now number of pulleys intermittently used in that scenario we can find the speed ratio by using this formula you can see here two pulleys first pair second pair, second pair two pulleys d2 divided by d1 into d3 divided by d4 so there two intermittent pulley has been used and another time we can find the speed ratio speed of loss driven to speed of last driver in another ratio product of diameter of the driver to product of diameter of the follower this way we can find the speed ratio in case slip is given we have to use this formula to here s is the slip suppose in both pulleys driver and the driven pulleys both pulleys having some slip so we have to add both that both values s1 and s2 so this is the slip in terms of percentage we have to reduce this value okay so we cannot get the 100 percent efficiency next we have to find the length of the belt drive this is the formula this formula is available in ph design data book page number 7.53 so this length is actual length the actual length should be shorter than the calculated length because we have to provide the initial tension so this actual length should be shorter than the calculated length to provide initial tension third step we have to find the design power how much power should be transmitted yeah number of losses will be the right so in including those losses how much power we have to design if you without considering this design power we can't transmit our expected power so we have to find design power see there is number of factor first one is ks that is load correction factor so in some scenario due to the power fluctuation load may be increased right so that factor also should be included that factor depends upon the load transmission capacity load transmission requirement we can select that factor that is available in PSD design data book say page number 7.53 next arc of contact factor how much angle the belt having contact with the pulley normally we will maintain the angle of contact 180 degree suppose this angle of contact is reducing the power transmission will be reduced so that factor also should be included and next one small pulley diameter factor suppose the driver pulley is very small we have to consider that pulley into the account because if the pulley diameter is reducing the angle of contact will be reduced so we have to take that factor also that factor should be taken like this up to 100 millimeter 0.5 if suppose the value 400 to 750 we have to take the value of 0 0.9 this is the table from that we have to take that value 
Fourth step, we have to select the belt. First, we have to select the material from the manufacturing catalog that is available in PhD Design Data Book page number 7.52. After that, we have to find load rating. You have selected the material. What is the load rating of your belt? That's what we have to find. Fifth step, we have to find the load rating correction. For that, we have to find the linear velocity of your belt. Then we have to find load rating. This is the formula that is available in PhD Design Data Book page number 7.52. Load rating 10 meter per second. You suppose the belt is transmitting the power 10 meter per second that is available in data book we have to take that value by using that according to your belt linear velocity we have to find the load rating of your requirement belt. Sixth step we have to find the width of the belt. This is the formula stress equal load by area this is this one is a common formula T max is the maximum tension it's one kind of load right tension and area b into d it's a cross section belt cross section so we can able to find the stress here next we have to find the width of the belt by using this formula design power divided by load rating into number of plies here the number of plies based on a smaller pulley this value can be taken from page number 7.52 after finding this this should be standardized because the width of the belt is standard one we have to take because we have to replace the belt. So standard belt is available in the market ready madly. So we have to select the belt in standard size. Then we have to find the pulley width. See the pulley width should be larger than the belt width. So we have to add some additional width with the belt width. Next step we have to find the power transmission. This is the formula power is equal difference between the tension into velocity. This is nice linear velocity we found initially that formula is available. Ninth step we have to find the driving tension for flat belt drive. Yeah this is the formula T1 divided by T2 equal E power mu theta. Here mu is the coefficient of friction and theta is angle of contact. This angle of contact we can able to find. This 2 alpha is nothing but how much angle your belt is contacting with the pulley. Yeah. The alpha can be found by using this formula R1 plus R2 divided by C. C is center distance. R1 and R2 are radius of your pulleys. Tenth step, we have to find the centrifugal tension. Belt having mass, right? Due to that mass, the centrifugal tension will be created. So we have to find that centrifugal tension. This tension is a wasted load. So it, this should be added with your initial tension. Yeah, this is the formula Tc equal mv square weight is equal mass into gravity right if you want to replace that mass mass e equal weight divided by gravity so instead of mass you can write this weight divided by gravity into v square suppose the centrifugal tension you are going to run your belt less than 10 meter per second tc is very very small in that time you don't need to consider this centrifugal tension if your belt speed is greater than 10 meter per second Definitely the centrifugal tension you should take into account. In that scenario you have to add this centrifugal tension with your tension in tight side and tension in slack side. After including that you have to find power transmission capacity of your belt. This way you have to add centrifugal tension if your linear velocity is greater than 10 meter per second. 11th step you have to find the maximum tension. Definitely there will be a maximum tension in a belt. For that we have formula maximum tension is equal stress into area of the belt. So here T is equal sigma into A. Suppose the centrifugal tension is given. You can see here maximum tension centrifugal tension. It should be added into the account. What is the condition for maximum power transmission? For If you want to transmit maximum power your tension should be three times the centrifugal tension. Yeah. You can see here Tc m v square. If you replace that, you can re rewrite this equation like this. V square equal t, t divided by 3 square root. Okay. This way you can find the velocity. Suppose if you want to add initial tension, the initial tension should be average of tension from tight side and slack side. In that scenario, if you are going to run the belt more than 10 meter per second, you have to add centrifugal tension. So in that time you have to 
maintain the initial tension including that centrifugal tension. Yeah, these are the steps we have to follow to design a flatbed drive to transfer maximum power. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and share with your friends.